Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Newsor Education. Um, we are continuing talking about um, relationship between the heat and and as a form of energy actually. And in this particular case, we will consider ideal gas and its kinetic characteristics, which will be eventually related to heat and temperature actually. So um, the today's lecture is kinetics of ideal gas. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics 14, presented on unizor.com. Uh, I do suggest you to watch this lecture from the website, because it contains um, notes for each lecture, and all lectures are actually presented in a logical sequence. Plus, on the same website, you will have Mass 14, which is a prerequisite course. So, I do suggest you to, to use the website rather than um, YouTube or any other source where you can just come up uh, come to accidentally basically find this particular lecture there. Now, it's part of the course that's very important, and the course should be taken um, sequentially. Uh, and by the way, the, uh, the site is completely free. It has no strings attached. You, you don't even have to sign on unless you would like to take exams, which are also provided on that course, uh, on that website. All right, so let's talk about kinetics of ideal gas. Now, we will talk about this in stages. First, we will consider only one molecule of gas. Then we will consider uh, an uh, ensemble of um, molecules which are moving in a similar direction. And then we will go to a concept of ideal gas. So it will be stage by stage. And let's talk about one particular molecule which is enclosed. Let's say these are coordinates. And we have somewhere a cubical uh, reservoir with gas, which has lengths of each edge L. So it's L by L by L. L is the length of the side uh, of the of the edge. Now, let's consider one molecule. So this is the x, this is y, and this is z. And let's consider one particular molecule which travels from this side, which is parallel to um, YZ uh, plane, to this side, which is also parallel to uh, YZ. So it's only within the direction of X coordinate. So it goes back and forth. Uh, elastically re reflecting from from the from the walls. Well, in some way, if you have one particular molecule, uh, that might be the case if it goes exactly in this particular direction. So this is one very very simple model of a one particular molecule of gas, which is moving between two opposite um, walls of this cubical reservoir, perpendicularly to the walls to the opposite walls so it reflects exactly um, along the same trajectory so what happens in this particular case with this molecule let's just think about it our uh, purpose is to uh, express the pressure which gas exer exerts on on the walls of the reservoir in terms of kinetic characteristics like mass and um, and the speed of the molecule. Now, so what happens in this particular case? Well, the molecule goes into this direction and momentarily exerts certain pressure. Now, the wall reflects it back uh, and while it's traveling, there is no pressure, basically. Now, if we, we, we used to have some kind of a concept of a pressure, like, for instance, um, some kind of an object is lying on the table, it has certain weight and certain area uh, on which uh, it, it touches the table. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, what we do, um, if you would like to know what's the pressure, we basically divide the force, which is the weight, by the area. So that's the pressure on each um, square um, meter or square inch or whatever matrix we are using. So pressure is uh, basically the force per unit of area. 
Now, in this particular case, the force is variable. So during this um, moment of reflection, the force basically is exerted because the way how the wall reflects the molecule, which means acts against the molecule, the molecule, according to the third uh, Newton's law, is pressing the wall. And that's what pressure actually is. <clears throat> so, how can we actually um, talk about the pressure in this particular case? Well, a very reasonable suggestion is to average the pressure. So, if during certain amount of time the pressure exists, and then during certain other amount of time, while the molecule is flying between the walls, pressure does not exist, all we have to do, we have to average uh, the force during that period of time. Now, if we consider that there is certain average of this force, what does this particular force cause? Well, it causes the reflection. So, if my molecule of the mass M goes into this direction, this is the vector. Then, after reflection, the same molecule goes with minus V. So, if positive direction is towards the X, then this is direction, th this is the um, moment uh, of the molecule which goes to the, towards this wall, and this is the moment when it goes back. So, let's establish a period of time. Let's consider the molecule is touching this left wall, and from this moment it goes this way and then goes back. This is the period, so to speak. It's like a pendulum goes back and forth, back and forth. So, this is the period during which we would like to average our force because this is actually a repeated period because the next period it will be exactly the same. So, that's why it makes sense actually to consider one period of time which is a real period. It's a periodic function, if you wish. The, fo the force is a periodic function of time and the period is the time during which uh, the molecule goes back and forth. Let's call this period tau. Now, what exactly tau is? Well, we know the speed, well, we assume we know the speed. So, it goes uh, from one wall to another, that's L, and then back, so it's 2L. So, if we get 2L and divide by absolute value of the speed, that would be our time during which the molecule uh, does this uh, repeated movement. It's a period. Okay. Now, during this time, again, force is variable. However, let's just think about the variable force uh, a, a, as acting to change the moment from, from this to this. So, in absolute terms, the moment is changed from mv to minus mv. to minus mv, which means the moment is changed by 2 mv. Well, I'm talking about absolute value right now, not as a, a vector. So, this is the change of the moment. So, the force which was actually exerted during a very small amount of time, but if you are averaging for the whole period, uh, this would be the change which this force actually did which means that the impulse of the force should be equal to the change of momentum. This is the impulse of the force again. This is not now a vector, this is absolute value of this force. So, if we would like to know the average force, then we have to multiply this average force by the time, and that gives me the change of momentum. Now, in practical life, this force is actually zero while the molecule is flying in between the walls, and it's something really strong during the reflection. And then again, it's zero while it's flying this way. But if you would like to average the force, then the average force times average by time. I'm talking about the time. So, averaging the force by time should give exactly the, the same result. 
So this is average force. Now, why is it making sense actually to talk about the average? If we're talking about gas, obviously there are more than one molecule. And since each of them is doing something during some small period of time, but then another molecule do, that, that does something similar, which means the reflection, then it does make sense. Because there are many molecules. So that's why the average does make sense in this case. So this is the way how I can basically establish the force. So let's, let, let, let's just skip these absolute value things. So whenever I don't really use the vector, it means it's a scalar. It's an absolute value. So 2m times the speed is equal to force times my time, which is 2L divided by V, from which F is equal to uh, 2. 2 is out. So it's um, M V square divided by L. Now this is average force. Again, not the momentarily exerted uh, force because sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's something. But it, this is the average force during this period of time. And the period makes sense again because everything is repeated after this period. All right, now, so what is the pressure? Well, this force actually is exerted for the whole uh, area. The whole area is L square. So the pressure, which is equal to F divided by L square, it's equal to mv squared divided by l cube. Now what is l cube? That's the volume of the reservoir, right? So it's mv squared divided by volume. So I used volume also v, but uh, the speed is v, so it's much easier to distinguish them. So this is the speed, this is the volume. And it can be expressed differently. What is mv square? mv square divided by 2 is kinetic energy, right? So uh, we will have uh, 2 kinetic energy of the molecule divided by volume. This is actually a very interesting uh, formula. The pressure which molecule exerts against the wall is equal to energy divided by volume of the of this cube. Okay, that's my that's my first step. Now I will try to to, to go from this step to a slightly more um, complex one, and then to ideal gas. All right, so let's just wipe out this. We will preserve our formula. Pressure equals mv squared divided by volume or 2e kinetic divided by volume. And the rest we will erase. Now, my next uh, level of complexity is when instead of one molecule which goes between these two opposite walls along the x direction, I will have many molecules which are going exactly parallel course, all of them. So let's say we have n molecules. Okay, now, what happens in this particular case? All right, each molecule will exert, exert certain pressure, right? So the molecule number I will exact this pressure. Volume is exactly the same thing, by the way. Now, if I would like to know the entire pressure of all these molecules, which are um, uh, exerting against the wall, I will have to summarize it, right? So I will have to summarize. So this is the total pressure.
Now, um, if M is constant, which means all the molecules have the same um, mass, then I can express it slightly differently. Um, so I will put M divided by vol outside, and instead of um, uh, summarizing all my speeds in square, I will rather do this. and multiply by n. n is number of molecules. Now what is this? This is average of the square of the speed. So this is therefore n times m divided by volume and times average speed square uh, uh, average. So square of the um, of the speed average. By the way square and then average is not exactly the same as average squared. Uh, just as an example, if you have 2 and 4, their average is 3 and 3 squared is 9. But 2 squared plus 4 squared divided by 2 is 4 and uh, 16 is 20, that's 10. So they are not the same. So now I'm talking about not average speed squared. I'm talking about average of squared speeds. All right, that's quite different. And if you wish, in slightly different form, it's n times, well, actually, I need, I need multiply 2 times n times average kinetic energy divided by volume. Right? Because m and v square average is basically average kinetic energy uh, of uh, all the molecules. Now, this uh, form of the same, basically, um, e equation s has a slightly um, better um, way of interpreting this. You see, if all our molecules are different, then I have to put i here, right? In this case, this formula actually still holds because this is, this would be two times average energy, uh, kinetic energy, um, and and this one where m is outside of the averaging is only for uh, cases where uh, all the masses are exactly the same. All right, so we have come up to a conclusion. This. So in this particular case, when we have n molecules, so let me put it here, if we have n molecules then the pressure is equal to n times m times uh, square, average of the squares of the, uh, of the speeds of the molecules, or uh, 2 uh, and average of kinetic energy divided by volume. And now we are ready for the third step when we will introduce ideal gas and we will try to do very similarly to get the formula for a pressure in case of ideal gas. Now, what is ideal gas? Well, it's molecules which are absolutely chaotically moving in all the directions. Um, all the uh, collisions between the molecules are 100% elastic. Um, they don't interact in any other way, like magnetic forces or gravity forces, etc. Non-existent. Only kinetic um, aspects of their movement is taken into consideration and obviously uh, refle reflection of uh, all the walls is also completely elastic. So the only difference is that instead of parallel moving we have moved in all different directions. So one goes this way, this way, this way, this way, etc. All different directions. Now, now let's consider 
we know that the speed as a vector can be represented as sum of three speeds along three coordinates. That's a vector equation, okay? Now, um, if, you, if you have a, a, a movement which consists of three different movements along one x, along the x, along the y, and along the z, then if I would like to know what is the pressure on the, let's say, this same wall, which I was considering before, on this side of the cube, I only have to consider the pressure uh, of the x components of all these uh, molecules. So, if they are moving in three different directions, towards the wall, towards the upper wall, and towards the side wall, or a back wall, whatever it is, this is the side, this is the back. So, side wall I'm interested in, and I'm not interested in top, and I'm not in in interested in back, right? So, I have to only take into consideration the x. Which means, if I would like to know the pressure of my wall, this one, I have to take Px, which is equal to um, uh, m uh, vix squared divided by 2. This is the pressure of the molecule number i. So, mo molecule number i against the wall which I'm talking about, this side wall along the x direction is this one. Now the total uh, pressure on this wall would be a uh, sum of Px which is m, well let me put m inside so we will have the case with, uh, why did I put 2? It's my inertia its volume. M V I square divided by volume, right? That's my total pressure, which is equal to absolutely the same as before. Um, M times number of molecules times uh, V x, this is x, again my problem, square, divided by volume. Right? Right. So that's my pressure on the x, on the side along the x, uh, along the x uh, axis. So, I am dependent on the average of all the different molecules, all of them, but only on their uh, component of the speed, which is uh, directed towards the x, uh, uh, along the x-axis. Now, what is it? Well, that's not easy to determine, basically, because all the molecules are m moving in all the different directions, but don't forget that we are averaging this thing. Now, let's talk about this equation again. Now, from the solid geometry, from here, you obviously can... It's, it's a three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay, so again, if you have a vector, you represent this vector as sum of this, this, and this, all right? So along the, if, if you consider this triangle, this is x, this is y, and this is z. It's a right triangle, this is the right angle, right? So it's uh, square of this is equal to square of this, which is v z square, plus square of this. And square of this, along, uh, uh, according to the Pythagorean theorem, it's v x square plus v plus v y square. So that's why we have this trivial equivalent, three-dimensional equivalent of Pythagorean theorem. Now, next uh, consideration is all the molecules are moving completely chaotically in all the direction, which means all directions are exactly the same. 
So if I will take average of this, it should be average of this plus this plus this. And since we are talking about averaging, which means sum of all these different v-axes divided by the number of molecules, they should be the same because all the directions are exactly the same from our perspective. X number of molecules which are moving into this direction is exac exactly the same as moving into that direction or to this direction, and their components, if we are averaging them, should be exactly the same. Which means it's the same as 3vx squared, or if you wish, 3vy squared or 3vz squared. Same thing. Which means in our case, this average of vx squared, average of vx squared should be equal to one-third of v squared average. Right? What follows is that I would like actually this formula to be dependent not on the not on the x component of the speed but on the speed itself. So it's equal to two m. Well, let me wait with two. So far it's m n uh, divided by three v square average uh, volume. That's what it is, right? Because v x square average is one third of v square average. Or equals to, in terms of uh, kinetic energy, it's n e kinetic energy divided by 3 volume. So this is the real formula. When all the molecules are moving chaotically, now this, forget about this, this is only an artificial case when all the molecules are moving in the same direction. And this is not the case, obviously. So this is the real formula, which basically tells what is the pressure of the ideal gas on its wall. Now, it's really kind of understandable in many cases. It's proportional to the number of molecules. Well, that's understandable. The more molecules you put, the greater pressure on the wall. Now, if the molecules are uh, having more kinetic energy, obviously it should produce more pressure, either because of the mass, because maybe the mass of the molecule is big, and then with the same speed it hits harder, which means the pressure should be harder if you're bombarding the wall with heavier molecules. Now, even if the molecules have a certain fixed mass, but their speed is increasing, then, and this is a, an interesting thing, now the pressure is increasing as a square of the average speed of all the molecules, right? So that's what we came up with. And obviously it depends on the volume, because if you have n divided by vol, by volume, this is a, a density of the molecule. So you can have this new density of the molecules, number of molecules per, per unit of volume. So it's two, it's two third. It's two third N E kinetic average, where N is the density of the molecules the number of molecules per unit of volume. And again, obviously, the greater the density of the molecules, the, the stronger the pressure, and with kinetic energy we already spoken about. So this is the main formula, this is the result um, of uh, whatever we were trying to um, come up today. Now, this formula is a little bit more universal than if we will take uh, as m and then average of the squares of the speed um, because this formula encompasses the case of different uh, masses of the different molecules, right? So that's why this is a very important formula 
from which we will do on uh, at the next lecture we will do some consequences actually because kinetic energy obviously is related is related to a temperature as I was talking about in the previous lecture so my next step and that's the preparation for the next lecture would be to connect the pressure the density or the volume or whatever and the temperature but that will be the next lecture so meanwhile I do suggest you to read um, a very detailed explanation of everything which I um, have talked about today in the notes for the lecture on the unisor.com so this is the uh, very important part um, I, I was trying to explain basically what I was talking about uh, in written form with certain formulas uh, and uh, I hope that after this explanation the written part would be maybe better understood so I do suggest you to read the written part of this um, of this lesson of this lecture on unisor.com so other than that that's the end of it thank you very much and uh, good luck